Okay guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and go over this assignment with you. I'm going to start off with saying um, you need to make sure that your equation is f of x is equal to positive x. I'm going to use the color pink. So whatever color you have as your first color pencil, that's what you're going to use for this part. So my first step is going to be to go ahead and graph the actual um, equation. So let me figure out what my slope is, and let me figure out what, what my y-intercept is. Well, what's my slope? Well, what's my coefficient with my x? It is a 1. How would I write 1 as a fraction? It's the same as say 1 over 1. Now, we have our b value. Well, we don't have a b value right here. Do you guys agree? We have nothing. So where is our intercept going to start? At zero. So let's go ahead and start at zero. And then we're going to go to our slope. We're going to do go up one into the right one. Up one into the right one. We're going to go the opposite way. Down one into the left. Down one into the left. Go ahead and connect your dots to make your line. And there it is. Now we're going to have to fill in the table. I want you guys to write your x's. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Well, when my x is at a negative 2, which is right here, what does it cross with my y? At a negative 2 as well. I'm just doing a different color so you guys can see. Alright, when my x crosses at a negative 1, what does it cross through my y? At a negative 1. When my, zero is, when my x is at 0, then my y is at 0. If my x is at 1, then my y is at 1. If my x is at 2, then my y is at 2 as well. So that's perfect. We have um, our table done, and now all we have to worry about is the domain, range, x-intercept, and y-intercept. So our domain is going to be, if we look at the, if we look at the graph right here, well, it's continuous all the way. Your line doesn't stop. You don't have any open or closed circles. It's a continuous line. So our domain is going to be a negative infinity is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to a positive infinity. Well, if our range is negative infinity to positive infinity, um, our line for our range, which is going uh, vertically, is the same thing. We have a negative infinity is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive infinity. Um, and then, so let's look at our x-intercept. Where does our x-intercept? Our x-intercepts at 0, comma, 0. Where does our y-intercept? Our y-intercept also intersects at 0, comma, 0. So that's all the work you needed to do for this first part. Give me a second and we'll head on to transformations. Alright guys, now we're going to go ahead and do the transformation portion of this. Um, I'm going to use a different color. I expect you guys to use a different color as well. I'm going to go ahead and use purple for this example. If my pen will work. Purple. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start off with um, our transformation. It's giving you a transformation of a negative f of x right here. So if we have a negative f of x, then what type of transformation is that? Well, if I go ahead and go look at my notes, it's a reflection across the x axis. Okay, so if I know that this is a reflection across the x-axis, then I'm going to want to go ahead and figure out what my equation is. My original f of x is equal to x. That's what we started off with. Now, I'm going to change it to a negative f of x. So if I have a negative f of x, well, I'm going to take this whole function right here and I'm going to negate it. So a negative 
x. Well, what happens when we have to get rid of parentheses? We're going to go ahead and multiply by negative 1. So a negative f of x, in this case, would just be a negative x. Oh, and make sure you put your color. I'm using purple. Okay, so now we're going to need to go ahead and we're going to graph this. So to graph this, we need to figure out what our b is. Our y-intercept in this case is 0. There's nothing added on over here next to this x. My m is a negative 1. How would I write that as rise over run? A negative 1 over 1. So now I need you guys to go ahead and go and graph the actual um, table. I'll go ahead and pull it up in a second. Okay guys, this is the graph that you should have up on your um, screen. I mean, not on your screen, on your paper. And we're going to go ahead and graph our reflection across the x. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start at my y-intercept, which is 0. And now I'm going to do a negative slope. We have a negative 1 over 1. So I'm going to go down 1 into the right 1. Down 1 into the right. Down 1 into the right. Well, if I go opposite, I'll go up 1 into the left. Up 1 to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my dots, make my line. And doesn't that look like a reflection? Yeah, it sure does. So now we're going to move back to the table. Okay, give me a second to move back to the table. Now we're back at the table. And if you look at your graph, when x is a negative 2, your y should be at a positive 2. When x is at a negative 1, your y should be at a positive 1. When at your x is 0, your y is at 0. When your x is 1, your y is at a negative 1. And when your x is at 2, your y is at a negative 2. Don't worry about this section of your table right here in the middle. Don't worry about that for now. That's just so you can see the difference between f of x and negative f of x. So now let's look at our domain. Well, do you guys agree that the, um, the graph is a continuous function uh, going along your x and y? It sure is. So our domain in this case is going to be negative infinity is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to a positive infinity. Your range is going to be the same thing. Negative infinity is less than or equal to y which is less than or equal to positive infinity. Your x-intercept is still at 0, comma, 0, and your y-intercept is zero, still at 0, comma, 0. So that's that. Um, make sure that when you do the next transformations, you pay attention to what the transformation is. You write down if it is a reflection or if it is a horizontal uh, shift, a vertical shift, you need to write it down. Then give me what your new equation is going to look like. You are using your parent function to, and you're manipulating your parent function so you can figure out what happens on your graph. Your graph at the top of your paper should have all these different colors and all these nice looking graphs, and they're in different colors so you can see what exactly is happening to your linear function whenever you manipulate it. Um, that's about it. Uh, thank you for listening.